This is Pastor Silva Bodley. And I'm Pastor Jesse Mudley. Welcome to the program today. We have a powerful, powerful message about exposing the demonic. And today is a prophetic message. It's an apostolic teaching. I'm going to teach you how demons operate, how demons are able to get to certain Christians, what Jesus spoke about in terms of being persecuted, how to handle persecution. I'm going to teach you what the prosperity gospel is all about. So stay tuned to this teaching. God bless you. Let's go into it. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. read these two testimonies and wherever you're watching us from I know we have a few names here but you can share your name quickly because we just want to welcome you on the program uh, read these two testimonies one is from Roshni in Canada Roshni from Canada says pastor prayed for a person with arthritis in the arms hands and fingers on the previous stream that was me and after your prayers the pain I used to have on my right arm from my shoulders to my fingers left me Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 And this is from Selvi in Durban. Hi, Pastor Siva. My name is Selvi and I'm from Durban. I was watching the live stream tonight when you called the person with the pain in the fingers. I was diagnosed with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh -huh. I have flare-ups all over me that appear like blisters. Wow. The pain was excruciating um, for the last few months and got worse in the last few weeks. And I started to wear a glove. Oh, no. As you spoke, the pain disappeared and my middle finger became numb with a tingling feeling. Mm. The pain in that finger was the worst. I have purposed in my heart about three months ago to become a member of the Miracle Center. Praise God. I will do so this week and I intend to drive up when the church opens, Amen. the lupus doctor is very confused with what's happening to me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. We love We've had case numerous case. cases of people healed of lupus and um, fibromyalgia. In fact, in the Joy magazine, we had people that shared their yes. testimonies uh, of being healed of this. So God can heal any sickness, Amen. any disease. Amen. Amen. Now, we want to welcome you uh, quickly. Those of you watching us from various parts of the world, I know there's so many of you watching us from uh, Durban, from jo Johannesburg, from Bluefontein, Swaziland, Cape Town, uh, Botswana, uh, Ghana, watching us from Malawi, from India, from America, from Europe, uh, from UAE, all over the world. But here's a few names. We just want to greet you guys. Okay, we have Michelle from Kenya, Janet in Dubai, Daryl and family in Ermelo, Amen. Esther, Nigeria, Roshni in Canada, G2 in Kerala, India, Shoba from the USA, Sanika in Australia, that's in Perth, and in Cape Town, David from uh, Zambia. Uh, we have Jaira in Durban, Kenny in Peter Maritzburg, Romy in California, Mario in Switzerland, mm -hmm. Illuminata in New York, uh, USA, Sharon from Uganda, Tamo and Kanti, Reservoir Hills, Wandila in Soweto, and then we have Semahans in Kenya, Selina in Cape Town, Maureen in Benoni, Christina in the UK, Nalini in Tongat, uh, Milali in East London, Riva in Dundee, and Barbara from Cape Town. Amen. And I know there's many more if you're watching. I just want to say uh, 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 hello to Sanika from Australia. I chatted with her, with her. And you know that our stream times are different from Australia. Mm. On the weekdays, uh, our stream goes on around, I think it's like 1 a.m. Yeah, so, uh, you might just correct me. Mm. I think it's around 1 a.m. in the morning. And she has to go to work the next day. And she stays awake. Yes. She and her family stay awake to watch our live stream. And even right now, the, you know, I know some of you in the U.S., the time zones are all different. Yes. So, guys, thank you so much for your hunger. We love you so much. And today, 
I'm praying a special blessing over you that really sacrifices to be part of the global church. You know, mm. uh, a lot of people watch the stream later on. It's not the same as watching it live. Yes. Because when you're live, the supernatural, bam, there's a copper anointing mm. and the supernatural just hits you right where you are. Yes. Amen. Amen. But God will still bless you. You'll get more of the word. We watch it later when you watch the, 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 the recorded stream. But live, you're in the flow of the supernatural. Mm. Amen. Now, we are discussing today, we're exposing the tactics of Satan. How Satan attacks us as Christians. Well, why should I know this? Because if you want to prevail in the supernatural, if you want to see God do miracles, you need to understand how Satan operates. Amen? You need to have an understanding of the enemy. You, 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 we all know there's power of God available. We know the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. We know that we can fast, we can pray, we can use warfare, praying in tongues and so on. But we need to also understand how the enemy attacks us. I've seen many people who pray and pray and pray, and when the prayer is over, they just collapse because the devil knows how to attack them. They don't understand the tactics of Satan, so they become easy prey for Satan. Amen? Mm. Amen? I mean, you, we've seen people in the presence of God who are in the presence of God, and when they come out of the presence of God, it seems like they get defeated. Yes. They get depressed, and all these things happen to them. So you need to have a full understanding of the supernatural. When do you prevail with the demonic? The answer is 24 by 7. That means whether you're in the presence of God, whether you're in church, whether you're in a prayer meeting, whether you're on a live stream, or you're all alone in your room, or you're all alone in your home, or you're just in your closet praying, you're driving in your car, in all those times, you will and should have dominion over the demonic because Jesus Christ has given you the dominion over the demonic. So we need to understand how these strategies work and how to guard against the strategies. Uh, but the Bible says God's people perish because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. So in this series, you're going to learn some stuff. One of the things you're going to learn today is what is the prosperity gospel? Amen. What is the prosperity gospel? A lot of people say, well, that person there, they're teaching the prosperity gospel. Well, have your Bibles ready. Have your notebooks because we're going to get into the word of God. So today in strategy number three, this is the, the third lie from the pit of hell. The devil makes you believe that Christians should not face persecution. Christians should not face persecutions. I've heard this lie from the devil and I've heard Christians responding to it. Listen to this lie. If you're undergoing a problem right now, then God does not love you and you are out of his will. You know, I've met so many people that ask the question, why am I suffering right now? Why am I going through this? I mean, why am I being persecuted? Why is this happening? Why am I being punished? Why is this happening right now? You know, has God stopped loving me? I mean, why doesn't he stop it? You know, like, <laughs> why? He, can, he has the power to he has, stop it. He has the power to stop it. Why won't he stop it? I mean, why did God give me this new boss? I mean, this boss that I have is like a boss from hell. You know, why did God give me a boss from hell? Lord, please, please give me a new job. Get, let me, get me out of this environment. Give me a new job. I want to leave this company because why? I've got a boss from hell. You might find out in a situation like that, when you leave the company, you go to another company, you'll get a more... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> say it to us. A boss that's worse than the one you just got out of. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it happen to people. Because you see, you're not understanding the process and what's happening. So uh, uh, one of the things I've said to people very often mm -hmm that during the examination, during the examination, the examiner is always quiet. Let me say it again. Mm -hmm. Your lecturer, your examiner will, will speak up, will, will teach you stuff. But when you're writing your exams, when you're in the exam room, your examiner is always quiet. <laughs> Oh, I know that just helps somebody right now. Amen? Amen. So here's a lie from the put of hell that God is disappointed with you. He hates you. You shouldn't be going through a situation. Maybe you're a pastor watching me and you're going through all these trials right now and you say, but why, God? Why? Why? Why are you punishing me? Listen, Christians will face 
persecution. But, there is a big but with it. And we're going to find out what that but is today. Amen? Now, here's the truth. Jesse, will you read the truth out to us? The truth is God gives us the strength to face any persecution. Oh, say it again. God gives us the strength to face any persecution. So watch this now. Yeah, the Bible says you will not be tested more than you, you can handle or what you can bear. Bear. Amen. So that means when you go through persecution, God always prepares you. Write that down. God always prepares a person before they go for persecution. Sometimes it might come like a shock mm -hmm. and you may say, but I, I, I don't know what to do. You've already got the skills inside you. Maybe you learned it five years ago, but it's inside you. Maybe you went to church and you heard a beautiful sermon and the message, the tools are inside you. Now the world is being tested. When the persecution comes, you have everything you need inside you to overcome. So say this with me. I have everything inside me. I have everything inside me. To overcome. To overcome. Any persecution. Any persecution. Amen. Maybe you might look at the pandemic as being a persecution. Maybe you might look at relationships right now as being a persecution. Maybe you might look at finances being a persecution. Maybe, maybe you know, uh, you, maybe you've been persecuted on social media or at school, wherever. Listen to me. You have everything inside you to overcome that persecution. And that's the but I was talking about. Mm. God will never put you in a situation where you're going to be knocked out. Let me say it again. You will never be in a situation where you will be knocked out. You may be knocked down, mm. but you'll get up and you'll be stronger then when you, you know, it's not like boxing. You know, in boxing, mm. the whole idea of boxing is to hit the guy, yeah. hit the guy, hit the guy to a point where he can't get up again. Yeah, totally knocked out. Totally knocked out, right? He can't get up again. But in the kingdom, when the devil knocks you down, yeah. you get supernatural strength. Amen. And when you get up, you're stronger than before. Than before. We are resilient. That's it. <laughs> so every time the devil knocks you down, you multiply. Woo! Oh, wonderful. Say this with me again. Every time the devil knocks me down. Every time the devil knocks me down. I multiply. I multiply. I get stronger. I get stronger. Amen. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. He's like one of those Rocky movies, you know, the knocked down <laughs> Rocky, and he gets up, he's stronger, and he goes out to the opponent. Oh, yes. Amen. And then by the time you finish that movie Rocky 9 is already ready. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about Rocky 15? <laughs> right now, let's go on. So, God gives us the strength to face any, any persecution. persecution. So, beloved, right now, you may be going through what you perceive to be a tough time in your life, but there is something important that you're going to learn today. God has not stopped loving you. God is with you in the persecution. Amen? Amen. The devil wants you to think that everything in Christianity should be so perfect, you should have no opposition, you should have no persecution. But Jesus Christ has told us about this. Amen? Now, uh, the next truth that I want you to understand today is this. Just because we can win every war, wow, let me say that again. Mm. Just because we can win every battle, every war against the devil, doesn't mean we will not encounter persecutions. And these persecutions do not automatically mean we are out of the will of God. Mm. Amen? So you, so the devil, the devil knows he can't get you, but he will still try. Remember the story with Jesus? After the three temptations, what happened? The Bible says the devil went away for a time, yes. for a while, for a time. And, you know, obviously that means he came back yes, he and tempted did. Jesus again later, right? So the same way, just because Jesus overcame or just because you can overcome temptation doesn't mean you won't be persecuted, right? The devil will still try. Why? Because he's kind of stupid. That's why. Now, <laughs> these persecutions don't mean you're out of the will of God. Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. This is what Revelation 12 says. I want you to read Revelation 12, verses 10 to 14. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Oh, wow, wow. What voice? A loud voice. Woo! So, the, you, know, you know when you get a loud voice? 
A loud voice is when somebody wants to make sure you hear. <laughs> right. Go on. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. The accuser of the brethren is cast down. Now, now, let me just say something. Revelation 12, and you know, on Wednesday nights, I'm teaching the book of Revelation. And uh, I'm not sure when I'll get to Revelation 12, but very soon I'll be in Revelation 12. Mm -hmm. Revelation 12 is talking about a future event, not a event that has occurred. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Because it says, now is come. That means it's not yet come. That, mean, that means it hasn't yet occurred. It's going to occur in the future. Yes. Remember Revelation chapter 12, sorry, Revelation, book of Revelation. The first chapter is the introduction, what the book is about. The, the second chapter uh, and the third chapter is about God's prophetic word to the now church, to the now church. And then from chapters four to the end, it's about events that are going to come. So they haven't come as yet. Now watch this. It says, now is come, it means it's the future. So now is come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, the power of Christ, for, so in the future, we're going to have a situation where the accuser, who's the accuser? We all know, the categorist is Satan, Satan. right? The Greek word is categorist. Will uh, be cast down. Yes. Woo, I love that, <laughs> right? So read that for me, Jesse. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Wait, say it again. Who? Accused them before our God day and night. Did you hear that? You are being accused day and night. But I'm such a wonderful person. I mean, I love everybody. I do good to everybody. I have no enemies, Pastor. You're wrong. You have someone who hates your guts. His name is Satan. And he has a whole lot of buddies. They call the demons. They all hate your guts, right? Then the Bible says... They accuse you, day that even when you don't do anything wrong, you still get accused. Amen? So the accuser, how often does he accuse you? Once a month, once a year? No! Day and night. Day and night. He's accusing you. He's accusing you. Oh, look at the way he sleeps. What a proud, haughty look. Oh, do da 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 da. Oh, da, da. <laughs> you know. He doesn't you, stop. He <laughs> doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. Right? He goes on and on and on and on accusing you. The Bible says there'll come a time. Now he's come. There'll come a time when the accusations will stop. He'll be cast down. But until that moment, that future moment, you are being accused day and night. And, and the Bible says they overcame him with the blood of the Lamb. Maybe read that for us, Jesse. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And right. they loved not their lives unto the death. Right. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows... Wait, wait, wait. He comes down to us with great... Wrath. What does it mean, Jesse? Well, wrath is every vengeance the devil can build up against us. All his attacks so there's and persecutions. Great, so the devil is suffering from great bitterness. Oh, absolutely. He has I like bitterness, <laughs> right? He has, like, he has like extreme bitterness. He hates and hates and hates you. He's bitter against you. You have such a beautiful home. You have such a beautiful family. Mm -hmm. You have such a beautiful ministry. You have such a beautiful business or job. Uh, you are someone who loves God, someone who loves worshiping. He just hates you even more. He comes down with rot. He has rot. Right? Carry on. Because he knows that he had but a short time. Wow. Look, watch this, watch this, watch this. The devil has come down to great wrath. Now he's angry with you. And one of the reasons he's angry is because he realizes his time is running out. Can, yes. can, can you believe that? He's realizing that just now he won't be able to attack you. So while he has time, he's pulling up all the stops. He's going after you with everything. He wants to get you, destroy you. And this is why you need to be in fellowship, beloved. This is why you need to be part of a ministry, a church, be under covering, be under that 
prayer covering. Be under that apostolic covering. Be with others who can pray with you. Mm -hmm. You should always have a prayer partner. Someone when you're going through any situation, even if you're not going through something, you should have someone who stands in prayer with you. Yes. Amen? A prayer partner. Always find yourself a prayer partner. Amen? You know, we have a prayer uh, 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 group in our church. We call them We Pray. And whenever people have needs, yes. we send it to our group as well. And, and they have such tremendous results because they are praying. They are praying. And because they're praying, we sing miracles happen. Amen. Yes. And, 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 and you need to, you can join them. You can be part of the We Pray group. You can be part of our intercession group. Or you can also even, you can even uh, find yourself a prayer partner uh, that you know, that you trust. But someone who says, when they say, I, I'm going to be praying for you, they actually pray for you. Amen. A lot of people say, I'll be praying for you. It's like a cliche. Mm. But find someone who actually prays. I know of a lot of people who call themselves intercessors and they hardly pray. I mean, they spend more time uh, uh, at the movies or cooking or whatever, but they hardly pray. So I'm talking about people that really seriously pray. People who pray, find somebody like that and, and join them. Amen? Join them. And you, 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 you yourself should get into a prayer routine in your home. Maybe with your family. Decide at 5 a.m. we're going to spend an hour in prayer as a family. Mm -hmm. The whole family together in prayer. Amen? We're going to spend the time in prayer. You need to make some sacrifices. Maybe you need to switch off that television, that Netflix movie, and go to bed so that you can get up early and pray as a family. Amen? Mm -hmm. And when you do these things, when you do these things, these arrows of the devil, these assignments of Satan yes. are stopped. Yes, they'll be quenched. They'll be quenched. Amen? But he knows his time is short, so he's bitter. He wants to take every person he can and even the Christians into hell. People think the devil is outside in the world attacking the drug addicts, the murderers, the gangsters, yes. the rapists, and so on, that he's there. No, the devil is not there because he already has those people. Yes, he does. But the devil and his demons are inside the church. They're among the Christians. Why? Because those are the ones he needs to take with him to hell. And there are some Christians who will, who will go with Satan into hell. Amen. Some of them will follow Satan. Mm. So Satan and the demons, they come after the Christians. And that's why as a Christian, you should daily put on the armor of God. You need to be in a place where you are spiritually uh, in prayer and where you are protected in prayer. You know, the, the, the great apostle Paul said this. He said, brethren, I beseech you, I beg you. Mm. Now we know Paul said he's not a beggar. But there was one time in the Bible where Paul says, I beg you. And what did he say? I beg that you pray for me. Mm. Amen. He was begging for someone to pray for him, him because he understood the power when we pray for one another. Yes. He understood that power. So he, he said, listen, I need people to stand in agreement, be in agreement with me in prayer as I go through situations. Amen. And, uh, and, and therefore, beloved, as a family, you can stand in agreement together as a family. A family that prays together stays together. together. Amen. Yes. Prays together, stays together. And guess what? You will be surprised. It might just succeed. I know of some people, I don't know if they've gone to heaven or not. They call themselves Christians, but I don't know. They, and I don't really know. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. But I have some concerns. I have some concerns. You see, because, you know, there's a lie that the extreme grace people teach. They teach you, hey, you can live, you can commit all the sins you want to now that you are saved. You can, you can murder anyone. You can live like a devil. You don't need to go to church anymore. And you'll still go to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's not what Jesus taught. He did not teach that. Yeah. The Bible doesn't teach it. Extreme grace teachers teach that. Amen. But you go back to mainline teachers. You go back to what the word says and you'll find the truth about grace. Grace is given to you and it's there to cover you for your past sins yeah. and your past transgressions. But if you commit iniquity, Jesus Christ makes the statement. He says, I know you not, mm. you work of iniquity. And the people turn around and say, but Jesus Christ, I preached in your name. I prophesied in your name. I healed the sick in your name. And Jesus says, you did? I don't know you. Where are you from? <laughs> so it means 
that there are people who call themselves Christians, but because of iniquity, won't go into heaven. Yes. So we need to understand these things, that what the Bible teaches, and we need to know the Word of God. Amen. The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And that's what we need to do. Uh, every day. Every, every day. day. You know, you, you and I, you know, if you mess up, if you mess up, and you are someone who is always repenting and saying and asking God to, to forgive you. And if you mess up along the way, because of the grace of God, you'll get into heaven. Mm. But if you think you have a license to do wrong, mm. then yeah. you have missed the word of God. As I said, there are so many people that preach these messages of extreme grace. And, and a lot of television networks have removed them. A lot of uh, bookshops have removed their yeah. stuff. Very misleading. Because it's not the doctrine of the Bible. A lot of it is, is out of the doctrine of the Bible. So it makes sense for you to go and research some of the stuff, go and study the word yourself and know what is the truth. Amen. Now, let's go on. It says here that for a short time, the dragon then sees... Is, and is, when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, yeah. he persecuted the woman. Right, which is the church. He forth the man-child. Right. Which means that you're pregnant with a vision, you're pregnant with a calling, you're pregnant with a purpose. Satan is more afraid of your purpose than he's afraid of you. That's what Revelation 12 is all about, the story of the woman that's pregnant. The woman is the church. We read, we find out that God protects the church, but we also find out that Satan circles, the dragon circles the woman, not because of the woman. Mm. He's more afraid of what she's carrying. You see, the thing that Satan fears the most about you is that you will one day fulfill your purpose. Let me say that again. The thing that the devil fears the most about you is not the fact that you go to church. It's not the fact that you're praying all the time. It's not the fact that you are confessing the word all the time. The thing that he fears the most about you is the fact that one day you will fulfill your purpose. You'll become, you'll get actively involved in church. You'll come into their God-given destiny. You become what, a strong witness for Witness me. for Jesus. You become a disciple. You will function in your calling. That is what is the most fearful thing in hell. So Satan will always distract you. You may say, hey, uh, I want to get involved right now in, 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 in the visitation team. And Satan will come to you and say, you don't have the time. You got this. So he'll give you more distractions. He might give you more work. He might give you more studies, whatever. But he'll distract you so that you stay out of your purpose. He, he, he will even bless you financially so that you stay out of your purpose. As long as you're no longer in your destiny, as long as you're no longer in your purpose, all the demons are happy. They'll even pack your bags. They'll, they'll, they'll dress you up in the morning and send you to church. What a powerful, powerful revelation we had today in our teaching. Amen. Amen. I know you learned truths you never knew before. Your life is definitely not going to be the same. Amen. Amen. And if there's anything you missed, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. Also join our live streams on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. This powerful revelation. On these broadcasts, we can only give you 25, 28 minutes of teaching. And there's a lot that we cut out that we're not able to fit in. So if you want the full revelation, you want all the miracles, everything, join our live streams. All the information is there on our website. This is Pastor Silva Bodley. And Pastor Jesse Bodley. Reminding you that miracles, miracles are, are normal. normal. God bless love you. you. We love you. Bye-bye.